Hello, hello, hello. Another day, another podcast episode. Thank you very much for joining us on the Niger FC podcast. Um, it's been a pleasure chatting with you guys. And, you know, we're here for episode seven um, already. Um, we appreciate your support. We appreciate all the views, all the listens. As always, my name is IOT. You might know me from Eagle Strike at home of Nigerian football. And of course, I have my wonderful co host with me, Smith Lai. You're welcome. And thanks for the love. Yes, Smith Lai. Uh, our Nigerian football encyclopedia. Um, yes. We've spoken a lot on this podcast about the Super Falcons and the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. Um, the tournament is still going on, but Nigeria's out, so we've kind of div- diverted our focus. You know, yes. um, kudos to all the teams that are still in the tournament. You know, wish them all the best. But, you know, as always, we are focused on, you know, the football happenings of Nigerian footballers around the world. And as the Super Falcons were knocked out of the Women's World Cup, um, in the male football side of things, you know, the season is kicking off. A lot of leagues have started now. I think we're still waiting for the um, Italian Serie A to kick off next weekend. Um, but for the most part, the rest of the leagues are, are in action. And we had a number of Nigerian players um, play games for their clubs this weekend. So we'll just quickly run through a few of the top performers. Um, and then we'll talk about some other stuff that's just been in the news. We'll start with a super ego striker. Um, you know, Taiwo Awoni. I mean, this is a guy that, um, if you've listened or watched me enough, you know that I'm a fan of Taiwo Awoni, you know. Um, I like him as a player, I like him as a person. And he was nursing, you know, a minor ankle injury. I remember even up till two days before their game this weekend against Arsenal, um, I messaged Taiwo, I said, ah, Taiwo, you go play like this, you know. And he wasn't too sure. He's like, ah, he just came back from training, from injury, just started training this week. So, you know, they have to see as things go. Um, so, unfortunately, he was on the bench, you know, for the game against Arsenal. Um, Forrest were down 2-0. And, you know, on his birthday, you know, the thing is that when you're a child of God, God likes to write interesting stories for you and for your life. You know, on his birthday, um, he came off the bench when Forrest battling there the go. And then what a fantastic counter-attack that was scored a fine goal, his first goal of the season in the first game of the season, you know, and after scoring that goal, you know, unfortunately, the Forest lost the match. He had to now go and meet his wife at the hospital, you know, as they were giving birth to a new, a new baby. I mean, I think for him, that's as good as days come. I mean, if they won the match, maybe it could have been even better. But to score a goal on the first game of the season on your birthday and then have a new child on that same day. So him and his child now are birthday mates. You yes. know, um, what do you think of what do you think of Taiwo's first game of the season and that goal against Arsenal? You know, like you said, um, Taiwo is not meant to play the first game because um, he was not seeing you know this injury. But you know, for for him to come, you know, to come in against Arsenal, he led the counter attack and he finished it. You know, when the way the pace is acceleration. In that game, I will say, is this Taiwo? Are you sure Taiwo is not using metal to run? Because this is not a nine Lego. <laughs> it's like he's using metal to, to run. So, you know, I, I'm really actually what happy for him. And don't forget that um uh you know he scored the, the, the last goal against Arsenal too in the previous game that in the last season's game that uh, that's like yeah. confirmed yeah. that um Nottingham Forest is actually was gonna play in the Premier League and he's scoring against them again. And, tell that you Arsenal, like that. and that Arsenal will not win the league. Yes, and Arsenal will not win the league too. So maybe Taiwo scoring against them is giving Arsenal like ah, this like uh, this guy again. No, maybe Arsenal should go and pay mm. fifty million or hundred million and go and sign Taiwo. To sign him. Yeah. Uh, be. So I'm happy that Taiwo <laughs> is back, and I'm a big fan of uh, Taiwo Awoni, and I, I can't, I'm not shy anywhere to say it. I'm a big fan of him, and I like the way he actually was comporting himself. Mm. If you see Taiwo, you know. On your birthday, scoring a goal, your wife to give him birth that same day. You know, I don't know how Taiwo can quantify his joy that day. You know, it's just a mm. perfect day for him. You know, strong man Taiwo Awoni, very impressed with him, and I wish him best of luck. Mm. Okay, I mean, first game, first goal. Um, looking forward to it. You know, I remember when I interviewed Taiwo before the season, um, I asked him, oh, how many goals? What are your goals for the season? How many goals do you think you score? He said he cannot give me a number, but that all he knows is that he's going to improve on what he did last season. Mm. You know, considering the fact that now he scored on day one, 
in your mind now, how many goals do you think Taiwo can score this this season? Ah, uh, um, I pray that Taiwo you know, doesn't have all this uh, injury and everything. If but don't forget that Taiwo is going to be going to the Afcon, so we have to consider that it's going to be like a chunk of the game in January. But uh, I think sixteen goals, at least sixteen, mm, 16 goals. goals. Yes. Mm. In my mind, in, I was in, going in to the say Premier League. So you in the Premier League. No, no, yeah, in the prem. You know me, I was going to say fifteen. So you went even one more than me. So yeah, so that's yeah. good. You know, hopefully yeah. he can he can actually do that. You know, and uh, let, let, the let fact me that he's going to be missing. Sorry, let me say something too. I, want to, I just want to like predict something. Taiwo will score a trick this season. Mm. <laughs> he scored a couple of braces last season. You know, yes, so it's Eli is predicting Taiwo Awoni is going to score a hat trick this, this season. season. Okay, it. let's 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 watch, let's watch, let's see. You know, kudos to Taiwo, mm-hmm. congrats on the goal, congrats on your baby. You know, yes. wishing him all the best. And just very quickly before we move on to the next match, um, in that same game we saw Ola, you know, Super Eagles, right back, left back, wing back, everything joined. <laughs> you know, he made his debut for Nottingham Forest in that game. How do you think he did? Um, especially coming up against Bukayo Saka. Hey, you no, know, it, it did well. It did well. And I remember one of the one of our fans here telling that. Uh, why are you not talking about um, Olai, you know? I said that, ah, you now reply the best that, ah, let match finish now. I remember the <laughs> back and forth in that, <laughs> in that comment section that day. But, you know, you know, being the first game in the Premier League after, you know, how many how many years, you know, in, in Torino, it's good to see him back. It's good and how it fared. You know, it's like you're back home. So I don't think he shied up his mm. challenges. So don't worry. I think you know this we're gonna see better performance from Olai now. And you might likely see even see him scoring mm. uh, you know a couple of goals this season. Yeah, I mean we know that Olai not likes to pop up with a with a goal every every now and then. So yes. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets, you know, yeah. maybe two or three goals course, this season. Yes. Um, kudos to him, you know. Unfortunately, Saka still scored in that game, but I think he held his own, you know, he did a good yeah. job. And he yes. had a fine debut. I mean, Asman is not an easy team to play against. Um, yes. and there will obviously be easier matches um for them coming up. I mean, their next game is against Sheffield United. So I'm yeah. sure that's a that's a game that they will expect to possibly to win. their first points on the board. Yes. yes. Um, okay, moving forward. Um, we'll keep it in the Premier League for now because we had another player, uh, not a new player in the Prem, you know, but um, just always an interesting player in my own opinion to talk about. Um, Alex Wobi um, played for Everton in their opening fixture against Fulham. Um, Calvin Basso was on the bench for Fulham. He didn't play. Um, but Iwobi played as a left midfielder um, in this game for Everton. He created three chances. Had a fine game. But still, Everton lost the match 1-0. Now, mm-hmm. we are hearing that Alex wants to sign a new contract. You know, they are still negotiating a new deal for him. With the way this Everton team is going, <laughs> do you think they are in for another relegation scramble this year? You know, um, no, thank you for actually what you bring it that one. You know, if you watch Iwobi play on TV, you might criticize him. But you know, I went to watch one of his two, one one or two games live, and I knew the shift the Wobi normally put in. Fantastic player. The spaces it will be co- it will be covered during the game is something that uh, you cannot see on TV. It will be so important to this Everton mm-hmm. team. But it's like when, you know, early, early days, you see Everton struggling. Even the signs they are making, it's like they want to go down. This down, oh, this, this championship, oh, they are bent on going down. They are, they, that is their love. Mm-hmm. They want to go down. You know, if they are signing, they are, the signings they are making, the signings that will make them fight the legation. So it's like they are preparing for another relegation dogfight. So, you know, a team of Everton status should be signing players that will make them be in like top half of the Premier League. Not players that, that are specialists in fighting relegation or has been relegated before. So I just hope that Alex Wobi will think twice before putting the dotted lines. Because we don't want to increase the our num- the number of contingents we have in the championship again. In the championship. We already have enough. Let it just stay like that. We don't want to have more. 
please, mm. Alex, if you are listening, put if you're going to sign a new deal, put relegation clause there. That if everything should go down, you are not going down with them, if possible. That's my thought about that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, like I said, Alex had a good game personally, but overall, yeah. um, Everton don't seem to be a very serious team right now, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. um, their same lack of goal scoring, you know, I, I just don't see it's going to be an easy season for them. I think they're going to have another battle. Maybe they might stay up. You know, if I if I had to guess now, I expect Luton Town to be a worse team. I expect Sheffield United to be a worse team. And then whoever the third team is is up for grabs. Um, but it will be, you know, I, I don't even know what to advise him. Um, everything just needs to be very careful, and he too should just make sure he's making the right decision for himself. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, okay, leaving the, leaving the Premier League now, but sticking in England. Um, this is the only player we talk about in the Championship, just because he, you know, he, I think he scored a fine goal and he had a good game. Um, defender, super good defender, Shemi Ajay, you know, scored a goal, his first goal of the season in. West Brom, which Albion's 3-2 victory over Swansea. You know, championship, I think, is match day two in the championship, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a, a good goal, you know, I saw the, it was a nice volley from a set piece. I'm like, ah, this guy finishing like a striker. But I mean, Shemi Ajayi is a player that has been known to, I mean, pop in, pop in with a few goals here and there throughout the season. Um, do you think, you know, he's somebody that we still need to pay a lot of attention to? Um, and, you know, looking forward to January, you know, at the AFCON, um, do you see Shemir Jaya as somebody that can, can play a key role for Nigeria if he's having a good season in the championship? You know, uh, I know a lot of people already think that uh, I'm very controversial. You know, I don't want people to think that way, <laughs> that I'm controversial. But uh, I will just say this. I'm happy that Shemir Jaya is having a fire season now. And last season, he wasn't really getting enough game time in each other before towards the end of the season. His side played very well. But for me, you know, mm. since Semi Ajayi made his debut for the national team, Semi Ajayi has been a backup defender. He's the Ojibo War, they have been like the top choice defender. In fact, I, I remember that Semi Ajayi was dropped. Uh, towards um, when we were preparing for the AFCON in 2019. But he finally made the mm. AFCON team in 2021 in Cameroon. But he was not even playing. I think, um, what was he called? It was a uh, second choice to to Ekwang and uh, Kenneth Meru. It was like a backup defender. So, you know, it's good that he's getting game time now. But to me, as he sees uh, Mia Jai, you know, suspects sometime defensively. But I hope that he can gain his confidence and perform mm. well. But, you know, for me, it's not someone I can think that, um, you know, super egos where it's like, oh, we should rely on like that. I just think that, um, you know, he's having a good game. That is fine. We just hope that he continues. He can mm. give us further options. For me, that's it. But not someone that we can say, okay, we are relying mm. on directly. Mm. Okay, yeah. okay. Interesting one for sure about um, Semi Ajayi. I honestly don't have that much of an opinion. I was just impressed by the goal, by the finish that he had. You know, um, hopefully he can have a fine season. I mean, just for context, Ekong is back playing first team football again in, in Park in Greece. So mm-hmm. Ekong would obviously be hoping to maintain his spot in the team. Omeruwe is playing first team football again for Kashim Pasha in Turkey. You know, so he'll be hoping to um, maintain his spot in the team. I mean, Unfortunately, we don't have any defender playing for a top team, but you know we have to make do with what with what we have going into the tournament. Yes. Um. Okay. Okay. Um. Let me now talk about two players that we have in the Scottish Premiership. I mean, um, we're living in England, but we're still in the UK. Um, in the Scottish Premiership, Leon Balogun and Cyril Dessas. You know, they were both in action for Rangers as they stormed to a four 0 victory over. Ayo Bileye and um, Samson Lawal, you know, um, of Livingston. I mean, Lawal wasn't in the match they squad. He just signed for them. But Obileye was in the team. Obileye was, you know, playing centre-back, played the entire 90 minutes. And, I mean, Rangers just ran past them. Um, especially though, Leon Balogun, I think, had a fine performance in that game. You know, 
um, made two tackles, made two interceptions, made three clearances. He won nine duels in the game. You know, um, he was just immense in, in defense for, for Rangers. Do you think that for Leon, this is just his perfect level? And, you know, rather than all the, I mean, now he's on the older side already. But do you look back at it and say that all the moves that he has been trying to make, trying to establish himself elsewhere, you know, he should have just stayed in Rangers all these years because Rangers is where he's really been playing and has always played his best football. What do you think about Leon? Uh, yeah, I think um, I think uh, you, you you're right with what you said about uh, Leon. I think uh, you know I also saw the game and I realized that he played very well. You know, a lot you know the um, the Scottish press. You know, they showered the comium on him. They they praised him a lot for actually mm. what he did in that game. So I think that um, Scotland is like home for for Leon Balogun. You know, he, I think probably he had one of his best seasons in, in the Rangers' color. So, I think Scotland is home for him. So, I just think that, you know, he uh, doesn't need to think twice. You know, he, he left Rangers and went to Rangers. Now, he's back to Rangers. So, if he, wants to leave, if he wants to leave Glasgow Rangers now, he just come to Enugu Rangers. So that, uh, you know, we know that... Uh, is moving from Rangers to Rangers to Rangers. So, so that is it. <laughs> yes. You know, that would have been perfect for, for, for but I'm happy about uh, Leon Balogu. And I think you must have mentioned Sri Tessas too, also played in that game. You know, I was impressed with Ayobile, but uh, the firepower of uh, Rangers was too much for, for him to actually work yeah, and much, in yeah. that game. And um, talking about Sri Tessas, you know, they have been criticizing him now. In the Scottish press, that um, <laughs> it's not, it's not impressive. You know, I have to be honest. There is his own I was, I, see, I was going to, I was actually going to ask you because you know he's not doing as we thought he would, he would do. He's not doing. You no, know, it's like the level of Scotland is more than him. The way we are looking at him. So the way <laughs> he perform, you know, why he scored his first goal, and I saw the Instagram post. Hey, first goal. What the performance that day was not good. And now just ball, ball just go to in leg. In just yes, now. Even the previous game that they lost one zero, you know, they lost one game one zero before that uh, Champions League game in the Scottish uh, Premier League. They mm. lost one game. That game that they lost, he, 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 he performed. Yeah. Yes, he, he performed badly. So I thought he was going to be on the bench in that Champions League game. So this one too, he didn't do well. It was it was because of him. I watched that game. Because of Sirius, I watched that game, so he didn't do well. So I just he think was, that maybe... he was the he was their lowest rated player in that game against Livingston. Yes, he didn't do well. So I'm just hoping because it's someone that I have a soft spot for because you know I I know his family, I know people around him, but I just hope that uh, he can, you know, he can he can Step get himself up. and actually what you know score goals. Because if he could score like two or three goals in the oh. Scottish Premier League, he's going to really improve his confidence. Because game against uh, Livingstone should be an easy game for him. And you are playing at home. Oh. <laughs> I mean, considering the fact that he plays for Rangers, you know, <laughs> you would want to believe that he's going to have a number of relatively easy games for him because Rangers are obviously one of the dominant <laughs> sides in, in Scotland. But yeah, I also was not impressed by his performance against Livingstone. You know, like I said, um, the lowest rated player. He missed one big chance that he probably should have scored in the game as well. Um, mm -hmm. But hopefully he can pick it up. You know, I, I'm not going to write him off yet. Um, let's see how he continues to perform. Let's see how things go for him. This season is still is still a long one. Yes. Um. Okay. Okay. Now let's move away from the UK. Um. I will jump quickly to Germany. Um. In the German DFB Pokal, which is their um cup, you know, in in Germany. I mean, Victor Boniface made his competitive debut for Bayer Leverkusen, you know, after joining in the summer. Um, and they played against FC Teutonia, you know, um, a, a lower-ranked team, you know, FC Teutonia are not in the Bundesliga. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, it was obvious that they were not on Bayer Leverkusen's level. They won the game 8-0, and Boniface was able to score his first goal for the club. Um, a good finish, you know, wasn't like a very difficult one, you know, uh, the... Um, his teammates played a fine square pass to him in the box. You know, he had to take one step back, finish with his left foot. Um, powerful finish. Um, 
but then at the same time, you know, his overall performance because I actually did watch the match. His overall performance was 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 quite good. You know, I would have hoped that he would have been able to score more than one because I think as at the time he left the field, I think the score was maybe four or five zero. Um, but he was he was able to still put in a good shift. You know, scored his first goal. Obviously, that first goal is always good for confidence. As a striker, I think one of the best things that can happen to you that you really really want to see is you want to score on your debut. You know, so that was a good thing for him. Um, I'm still looking forward to see how he performs in the Bundesliga. Obviously, that's going to be the real test. Um, they are going to play, I think, their first game in five days' time against Leipzig. Um, we just saw Leipzig beat Bayern Munich in the Super Cup. So, obviously, it's not going to be an easy one for them. Um, but I, I still think that he's going to start and, you know, um, hopefully he can get another goal there, kick off his league account as well. And, um, can can do really well. What do you think of Boniface's debut? You know, what do you think? No, like you said earlier, it's always uh, good for strikers to you know to score their first goal. When they score their first goal, that is um, that's like a confidence, like the confidence we come. Then they can build on that and continue to score more. I remember when Victor Sime scored his first goal. So from there, you can realize that the confidence became more and more. He started scoring goals too. So it's good that Boniface actually was scored and they won like 8 nil. So like you said, it's going to be like a big test for, for Victor Boniface against RB Leipzig, which I think that uh, Boniface is a player that is fearless. He's a player with a big heart, mm. a player for the big occasion. So maybe that mm. game would be the game that we even announce Boniface to all Premier League. To, to all Bundesliga players, mm. Bundesliga defenders, yeah. that when they want to, uh, what's it called? When they want to defend against him, they should be rubbing their palms because a soldier <laughs> is coming to destroy them. I believe in Boniface. Boniface mm. will have a very good season. Mm. Okay, and on on the thought of him having a very good season, I'll ask you the same question I asked you about Tyro. How many how many goals are we seeing in his future in this? 2023 24 season. Um, I think 12 goals. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, always, you're always going higher than me. I was going to say 10 goals, you okay. know. Um, mm-hmm. But if you can score, if you can score 12, that's good. Okay. And yes. then, further question added to that Will Boniface be in Ivory Coast in January? Yes. I think uh, Boniface will go be in Ivory Coast mm. in January. I think um, if he's fit, if he continues to play, Boniface is going to be in Ivory Coast in January. So if Boniface will be going to Ivory Coast in January, there might be a major casualty in uh, the front line of the Super Eagles. So maybe the captain hmm. will turn to a player coach so he can, can, can be there the way it is. So I think that is the, that's the best thing I do. Don't 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 talk any about our Skipo. Skipo started no. his started the game for Silver Sport this weekend, though. Yes, and you there know, was this, the, in that first game. In that first game that he just started like this, he has almost matched the same minute he played last season. Yes. So so and uh, and we all saw the game too. So I don't want to mention because it was not part of the our preview. So I don't want to go into much details about it. <laughs> But uh, you know, it's just for for our big man to start wearing track suits and oh. uh, you put badge on him, so say, San Kojo, because these boys we have up front, eh? <laughs> they're they are not talking. They are not talking players. So I'm just saying it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And speaking of Turkey players, um, let's move to the Turkish league. Um, in the Super League, we saw. A young Nigerian player, Fisayo Dele Bashiru. You know, he just moved from what team was he in? I think he was in Sheffield Wednesday last Wednesday, season. Yes, yes. You know, he was in Sheffield Wednesday last season. And he just made a move to Hate Sport in the Turkish Super League. And I mean, on his debut, uh, my guy is popping up with two goals as mm-hmm. a midfielder. He played in a centre attacking midfield role. You know, yes. um, you know what I found even more interesting? Mm-hmm. These, these Nigerian players sometimes they are very funny. This guy eh, never answered Eagle Striker before, never said anything. As the, as he scored those two goals that is, now he sent message, say, ah bro, she no go like post my my, my stats. <laughs> 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 
say, it's a message. You say, ah, bro, I just got to go. So, she, you know what to post. And I told him, don't worry, we're working on this. You know, um, and then we really posted. But I went back to watch to watch his performance, you know. Um, not only did he score two goals, he actually created another fine chance for his team, you know. He was good on the ball, was accurate with most of his passes. Um, you know, even dribbled dribbled um, past a few players a couple times. And I just thought, hmm, okay. You know, want to watch, let's keep an eye on him. Um, in as much as we might want to say, ah, he's playing in Turkey, we have to be cognizant of the fact that a lot of our players are not playing in, like, very, very top divisions. And he's mm. only 22 years old. You know, um, we're still looking for a creative outlet in midfield. You know, it's something that a lot of Nigerian fans have been saying. Even as with the post all the strikers, people will go to the comments say, I beg, no be striker we won't see. Post us the good midfielder, you know. Um, so, do you think, you know, I mean, early days, but do you think that this boy, if you say Adili Bashiru, is somebody that, you know, can, can work his way into the Super Ego squad? I mean, his brother is even there as well. But we're talking about him right now. What do you see for his potential? You know, you know he's a boy I know right from uh, you know his formative years in the uh, Man City. You yeah. know, uh, at the they play at my at my backyard here, and when he was in Man City, he was highly rated. But we all know that uh, when you are in the top club academy in the UK, sometimes you might be good, but it might let you go. Look at look at Sancho. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so you know, he left for Sheffield Wednesday. He played. He started playing, but um, you know, I think it was very hard for him to renew his contract with Sheffield Wednesday. That was when Coach Darren Moore stopped playing him. Then you know, he was just bringing him on, stop playing him. Then it was so obvious that uh, he's going to leave Sheffield Wednesday. A very good player. I remember you posted him. He scored one goal for Sheffield Wednesday. It was the one brutal goal like this. You posted before. Like, it was maybe from the yeah, outside the team. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, he's someone that uh, you have tracked very well too. You know how well he could do it. But before, he was playing in League One. Now, he's playing in Turkish Super League now. So, that means that uh, if he could do it in League One, he's he's it. yeah, he's a step up. Also, didn't see what? In Turkish uh, Super League, which is actually what? Very good for him. So, you know, I was surprised that he went to Turkish League because uh, big clubs made inquiry about him, like Benfica, like, uh, was he Salzburg and AC Milan? I know the AC Milan, you know, all these, they are scouts, eh? They like to link everybody to AC Milan. So, I knew that um, he was also was linked to, <laughs> <laughs> he was also linked to AC Milan too. But it's good that he's playing now. To your question now, do you think he can make the Super Ego? For me, I think it might be too early for him now, but you know, there's nothing bad giving someone like that a chance. But I will not say anything mm. about him now until we talk about his brother. Because mm. okay. that's going to be the first time two siblings will be fighting for the same position. Yes. Yes. No, no. I mean, interesting one for sure. You know, I mean, he's still a young player. I think he has high potential. Um, He's yeah. somebody that I'm going to keep a close eye on throughout mm -hmm. the season to see how he continues to grow and continues to develop. You know, like you said, um, I also was a bit surprised when I saw him going to Turkey. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for several reasons, like you already mentioned. And also just because of, you know, especially a lot of English-born players, they don't really like to go to Turkey like that. Mm -hmm. So it was also another thing that made me think, ah, why? You know, but um, I mean, Perfect debut. He cannot have wished for anything better than that. Two goals as a midfielder. And yes. hopefully he can continue to build on it. You know, his stock can even still rise um, based on how this season goes. Um, yeah. As far as into the Super goals, January might be too early. I think even if he scores 10 goals between now and January, I think they will probably still go for some of the more familiar options that they've had, you know, for a long yes. time um, yeah, before they really look his way. But yeah. if, he con if he continues to develop, you know, um, his future is bright. You know, we might see mm -hmm. him there. In another one year, two years, you know, um, mm -hmm. him and his brother go the go the battle, but let's see how that goes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on. Moving on. Um, let's let's travel to France now. Um, in France, we saw another young player make a fantastic debut for his side. I mean, it's a player that we discussed his move on the podcast. Um, I think maybe the last episode. Um, fish. Um, rather. Ako Jerome Adams. Ako Jerome Adams, you know, young striker. I think he's 23 years old. He just signed for H Montpellier HSC, you know, in France. 
less than a week after completing the transfer, they gave him his debut right from the start in their League One match against Le Havre. And um, uh, in two minutes, the boy struck twice. One with a fine header and another one a nice run and then left-footed finish into the bottom right corner. I mean, two goals on your debut as a young striker in a new league. I think it just gives you all the confidence boosts that you need to really be able to believe that um, uh, I can play in this in this league. And I don't know if you saw his celebration, you know, when he scored that first goal, you know, he just went to the crowd and he just opened his arms just so them, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here, don't worry, I'm here now. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, this is a guy that I was, I posted on, on social media asking people, do you think he can get a super good call up this year? People will say, ah, some people say, ah, I'm on the list of strikers done too long ago. Ingo has to stay back for now, you know. Um, but I think he's a striker with a lot of potential. He's been firing for over a year now, you know, in, in Norway, which got him this move, obviously. Um, how impressed were you by his, by his debut performance for Montpellier? You know, um, like we discussed earlier in the podcast, maybe probably two weeks ago or last week, about uh, his move, that um, the, the move is like 95% done. It's just uh, the announcement yeah. was imminent then. But, you know, you said something that I took. You said that uh, some people are late bloomers. They don't really, you know, they start late. You know, I remembered when he played on the, uh, on the 20, on that push, Paul I in 2019, you know, the type of course eh, when people cost them for like you know, like grand football fan. Hey, <laughs> the type of where you bring this person, how you bring this person, when they bring him come in and Tijani, the guy in Czech Republic. Hey. But now look yeah. at him now. He's doing what he knows how to actually what to do best. You know, he's someone that I'm really impressed oh. with, and I wish him best of luck. Now he's playing in the French league. Before you know it, a 15 goal French league. 14 go French league can lead to like a 40 million pounds transfer before you know it. You know, you know, it's just like um, you know, it's just where Scout can actually was saying now. I remember talking to one of my friends, said, uh, uh-huh, this are uh, this Hako boy. If the Hako boy goes score trick for next weekend, you just say go sell him again for Montpellier. I want to say uh-huh. <laughs> before the window close. <laughs> before the window close, he's <laughs> I'm like, you can catch us quickly. He said, uh-huh. said that's happened before. You mentioned example of uh, Emerson. Of Barca that just go back from Real Betis and from that same window again they sell him to Tottenham. So I was now mm. worried, ah, but I just want him to say to there and about super good call up. <laughs> I don't know about that too, because Terry Murphy scored how many goals last year and he wasn't considered to play in the last game that we played. It was dropped. Mm. So ah, yeah. maybe we should register a different team for Afcon. So that uh, we can take our players there. Yeah. We can do <laughs> 23, 23. So, but um, I will just wish him best of luck. I, I like him a lot. A, a second goal, especially. Good finish. You know, I, I would say the only thing that makes me think his Afghan chances are quite lower than I would have liked to be is because of the archetype of player that he is. You know, um, I think he's a very similar striker to somebody like Evita Osime. Yes. And, you know, even if the coach wants to pick, even if the coach wants to pick a, let's say an outside option for mm-hmm. striker, they mm-hmm. would go with somebody that is a different type. You know, we've seen coaches, sometimes maybe they will decide, okay, their third striker is going to be that tall guy. Mm-hmm. So in case they need to play direct football, you mm-hmm. know, or maybe we can even say that third striker can be a really small player that can dance mm-hmm. with his feet, you know, and can do something. And given the fact that him and Osime, like, you know, with all due respect to him, there's nothing he can do that Osime cannot do better at mm-hmm. this point. Um, mm-hmm. So that's the reason why I think his his chances are quite slim, and we just have so many strikers, you know. Yeah. But still, I was very impressed by his debut. You know, yeah. only twenty one touches in the whole match, but you know, two of those touches were were important goals for his team because, um, they, unfortunately, they didn't win the game because they considered in the ninetieth minute, you yes. know. But still, they were losing the game one nil. You know, he scored those two goals to make them up two one. Um, yeah. and you know, very impressive. Um, I saw the way his teammates were celebrating with him. It was almost as if, ah, guy, you don't show for us, man. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. So, yes, wishing him all the best. Um, okay, let's ask the same question again. Ako Adams in the French League won this season. How many goals do you see him scoring? 15. He already has two. 15. 13 more. 15. Hmm. I think, okay, I'll go with 12 goals. I'll go with 12 goals. 
I mean, hopefully he proves me wrong, you know. I mean, 15, if he does 15 in his first season, that will be on the same level of the likes of Osime, the likes of... I think Osime in his first season only scored 13 goals. Mm. Um, I think Murphy in his first season, I think, also scored 13 goals. Mm. So, if he can score 15, he will even be doing better than those two super goal strikers. So, yeah, let's see let's see how that turns out. Okay, I just want to say something um, to that Aqua Adams. Sorry. You know, uh, I just said that, uh, you know, the reason why I said 15 is because the way Montpellier plays, they play to his strengths. So, mm. that is one thing that don't really actually would help him. You know, if they keep on loading the bus with uh, crosses, you know, there's going to be this ricochet that uh, you will see Akko Adams pants, you know. And secondly, too, if Montpellier is under pressure and you love the ball to Akko Adams, too, the guy, you, know, you know, he can feed on counter-attacks very well. So, you know, everything is like favors Akko Adams. But uh, my question to you is this. Do you think Victor Osime and Tawa Wodi, they are similar? Because you said that uh, Akko and um, Osime are similar. Now, between Tawa Wodi and Victor Osime, do you think they are similar strikers? Um, they are similar, but they are slightly different. I think yeah. in the sense that Taiwo has that ability to play off of another striker. Taiwo yes. knows how to work in a one-two punch. Mm-hmm. Whereas Osime seems like somebody that just wants to be the focal point and mm-hmm. he wants to be the, the target man, you know. Um, Taiwo can work with another striker. Um, so even though they have maybe similar abilities in the sense that they are both strong in the air, you know, mm-hmm. they are both good finishers. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like the fact that Taiwo knows how to play with somebody else. You know, he's done it mm-hmm. at um, Union Berlin. He's mm-hmm. also done it at Nottingham Forest. Now, mm-hmm. if you play him up front with another forward, with another striker, he can mm-hmm. easily work with them, you know. Um, so that's where I think that he's different from Ano Sime and from, you know, um, an Ako Adams. In those matches, maybe when you are, need, you, are, you are desperately in need of a goal and you want to play two strikers up front, I think Taiwo can be very important. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, than just an Osime up front alone or an Aquadams up front alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, so yes, I think that pretty much wraps up our weekend review. Um, just or oh, I don't know if okay, if we want to add another one just to talk about it very quickly. Um, we know that Boavista are looking to sell players, but Bruno and Awas Yem were both in their starting eleven for their yeah. opening game of the season against Benfica. Um, yeah. You know, Bruno even created their first goal. Um, mm-hmm. I think they they won the game three to over Benfica, so maybe it would make them not sell their players anymore. But let's see, let's see how mm-hmm. that goes. We're still watching Bruno for a potential move, and also I was here for yeah. a potential move. Um, yeah. But yeah, that wraps up the weekend um, review of of Nigerian players around the world. Um, a lot of players were in action. To be honest, um, this weekend, Eagle Striker we tracked over two hundred different matches. Um, mm-hmm. So, of course, we cannot talk about 200 different matches today. Um, kudos to all the players who scored goals. I know some people will say, ah, why you not talk about me? But, you know, um, score hat trick will talk about you. You know, um, <laughs> that's the challenge for any, yes. for any player. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. Um, anybody that impressed you guys, um, leave a comment. Let us know what you were impressed about. Let us know what you think could have been done better. Let's keep the conversation going in the comments. Um, okay, okay. Um, switching topics now from um, club football, um, let's talk about the Super Falcons. You know, we mentioned them at the start of the show um, and spoke about how, you know, they've been eliminated from the World Cup. And a lot of them have now returned back to their bases, you know, to their different places. Some people have returned to Nigeria. Some people have returned to Europe. Some people have returned to the US, North America. Um, but then one thing that was um, fairly significant, you know, in itself was that the reception as much as when they were at the tournament everybody was hailing hey, 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 best player made us proud everything you know they got back home to a quiet you know um a, a just unique quietness of not many people talking about them i mean recently kudos we've seen you know um the governor of Washington state hosted Rashid Adajibadi and Rafia Timura you know the two players from his state he had a reception for them um and then we saw that the um, vice president, Abela, first lady, and the wife of the vice president as well, second lady, I think it's first and second lady, you know, they also hosted um, three of the players, you know, so I don't know what kind of event it was, but they sure took picture with them, you know, and celebrated them, they gave them flowers. Um, why do you think the NFF themselves, you know, could not really organize, I know they did not win the competition, 
But still, why do you think they could not just organize something more proper for them? You know, because right from when they were even living in Australia, players had all sorts of different flight schedules. Some people were flying from Australia to Abuja. Some people were flying to Lagos. Some people were flying straight to Europe. Some people were flying to America. Why do you think they couldn't just bring the team together first, just give kudos to them, and then allow them to fly to their different countries from there? No, yes, thank you for actually what raising that uh, topic. And I think it's the, one of the controversies that surrounded the build up to that World Cup. You know, some people still have um, these, I would, I would like call it malice, like uh, that, oh, you said this, no things like that. Because these girls did oh. well. They did well at this World Cup. Let's truth be said, they did well. I was expecting at least put all these traditional drummers. Gagan, gagan. That the one they were playing for them in you Nondo. Know, gagan, 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 gagan. Just yeah. welcome them. Like, know that they are heroes of our country. But because, you know, before they even come into the country, too, I think, um, I think, uh, they demand their money. Uh -huh. They don't they, they demand their money. So, those things you know, did not really go down well with the authority. So, I think that was the reason why yeah. it was actually what said, Loki. But we should learn how to celebrate those that actually what performed well for the country because if you are going to a football game it's like you are laying your life down you are serving the country you deserve to what they deserve to actually what praise them and we all the mouth too that they were making before uh, nigerians hey go and do this thing we are proud none of them can talk again now when the game is finished you know it was just like uh, sometimes uh, our country, the way we do, we just sometimes just keep quiet because we were making mad on Twitter. Ah, this guy, this you come, oh, come, oh, they were posting. But now with the guys came, it was just remember say, ah, they were just calling people. Nobody was there to welcome nobody. They were just going. It wasn't yeah. actually what good enough. But I think the major reason why they did not really welcome them was because uh, of the money. I think some of them felt mm. betrayed that uh, you're asking for this money. Get us what they do have before now. Why not they talk like this? Oh. <laughs> but, <laughs> did, you, did, you, did you see the report? Did you see the reports that um the NFF, you know, after the ladies posted um that fifth pro statement, mm -hmm. um Victor Osime commented, mm -hmm. them NFF. Mm -hmm. You know, the NFF apparently responded saying that oh Victor Osime should not just be commenting on things that he sees on social media, mm -hmm. that that he needs to be more careful. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, obviously, they're not happy. Go on. Yeah. I think the reason why I didn't like pick on that was because of the source. You know, it wasn't an official statement, it was just um, the source of the sure. existing water. So, that was the reason why I did not really pick on it. But I knew that uh, the way what Victor said, some people would not be happy with it. So, that mm. report about. Um, you should not be commenting on what really happened on social media. It could be true. It could be true that uh, they said that. But why won't we talk? You know, I spoke to one Nigerian journalist yesterday, and he told me that uh, he called the general secretary just to ask for the facts. He said when he called, the man just called the call first because he because he mentioned super facts. He caught the call straight away. He doesn't say that he started calling him again, but by him with phone calls. So he now picked up that, excuse me, sir, I'm just asking about the Super Falcons, about the payment and everything. No, no, no. Don't talk to me about payment. Go and talk to the media officer about payment. Mm. You know, they are still like upset about the way the whole thing actually what went. But the girls deserve to be paid. And I'm happy that the people are not forgetting these things. Mm. you know very very interesting i mean it's it's just unfortunate the way everything has played out but you know the the ladies are are heroes mm -hmm. you know they've done extremely well and we have to continue to give them their kudos um okay moving on moving on to the next topic i think um let's talk about one or two transfers potential transfers that are still in the news I mean, the transfer window is still open for about another 16 days um, or thereabouts. So a lot can still happen in this time, in this time span. Um, but I think one that is imminent is the transfer of 
Chuba Akwam. Um, yes. Chuba Akwam is a 27 year old player, I believe. He's 20, about 27 right now. Yes. Um, he just came off of a fantastic season with Middlesbrough, you know, playing as a center attacking midfielder, scored, I think, 29 goals in the league, was named as the championship's best player. Unfortunately, he could not lead his side to promotion um, as they lost in the championship playoffs. Um, but now we're hearing that he's going to be making a move to um, Ajax in the Dutch area de Vise, um, as a potential replacement for Mohamed Kudus, you know, who is likely um, you know, to leave Ajax because we've been hearing about a lot of bids in the Premier League for him. Um, yes. What do you think about this move? You know, at 27 years old, going to Ajax, um, you know, does this move excite you? What are your thoughts? Yes, you know, he's 27 years old. Let me say it. He's 27 years old. He's 27. There is no uncertainty. He's 27. So, well, 27, you still have <laughs> some games to play at 27. Don't forget that uh, Shuba Akbom wasn't given a jersey number last season. He was oh, ready to be no at yeah, the start of that season. He was ready to be loaned out until things changed. And he scored like 20 or 29 goals last uh, season. It was so crazy. Yeah. So about the transfer, the transfer was uh, it's like quite, for, it's very funny, I can tell you. Because I would say Lons in France agreed a deal with um, Middlesbrough uh, with, um, about, uh, with about 11 million euros for Shuba Apple. But when they agreed that day, I think Shuba Akpom's party too were discussing with Ayas. So, Alcy Lungs were really upset that, ah, we don't agree with you now. Why is it discussed with Ayas? So, they pulled out of the deal because they don't want someone that will bring without outbid them, like an embarrassment or disgrace. So, they pulled out of the deal. So, that was when and they now agreed deal with Ayas. And I think that uh, Shuba Akpom wanted to play in Ayas. So, according to reports too and you can see that uh you know Akpom never agreed a new deal with Middlesbrough so they were saying that uh, salary was too much and everything no he never agreed a new deal with Middlesbrough so I see the move to be a very good move you know it's like uh one Nigeria is leaving another Nigeria is actually what going to Ayas so this I don't unfollow Ayas since Basi left they, do, they want me to go and follow them again now are we <laughs> because of Akwam? <laughs> yeah, because of Akwam. But you know, I just hope that uh, it works well for him. <clears throat> we have seen strikers to that perform well for for Ayers. So I think Akwam is a very good player that can do well for Ayers. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about his super good chances? I mean, we saw even after scoring mm -hmm. so many goals for Middlesbrough, he was still not able to earn a call up. I mean, the coach at the time said, "Oh, that he he does not trust him enough." you know, to bring him into the team. Do you think that this move to Ajax is going to make his chances better or is going to make his chances worse? I think the move to Ajax will make his chances better because playing for Ajax, most of the guys that play for Ajax play for the Dutch national team. So I don't think that oh. um, the move should actually work. We cannot say that we are better than the Dutch national team. So I don't think, if he's playing well and scoring goals, I don't think that move should... You no, know, she actually what limit his chances of playing for Nigeria. I just think the coach should look for a way to accommodate him. And I can tell you, oh. if it will be, and Shuba Akwam combines together in that midfield, hey, they played together when they were baby, when they were boys, and they are very good friends. Young, yes. uh, if they combine together, hmm, in that midfield, mm. you will see it's, it's going to be scary <laughs> because they will be. Interchange positions to be scared. I just think that uh, there's a way you can work out. See, you don't go to a war with some with you, you go to a war with your best soldiers. So if Aquam is doing well, look for ways to accommodate him in that team. I think mm. that Chuba Aquam playing for Ayas. I think the Ayas will play the Europa League. I don't know. So playing the Europa League, yeah, playing the, Europa the, League. Uh, play the Dutch League, I think that one should help him. To get into the national team, than uh, you know, hmm. he's not playing in Turkey. He's not playing in Turkey. <laughs> hey, what do you have against players in Turkey? <laughs> um, okay, is there is there any other is there any other transfer that you think we are very close to, 
uh, yes, uh, transfer that we need to work uh, you know uh, reports are thinking that uh, you know Benjamin Fredericks is you know the under 20 defender is about to actually what to move finally and um, you know Daniel Dagger too is about to actually what you know move so which, club, yeah. which club is Fredericks moving to so I think uh, FC Basel of Switzerland is actually what the favorite to to get him but I'm hearing that uh, RB Salzburg too of um, of Austria they are also what looking at him but they said the boys preference is to go to Borussia Dortmund <laughs> no it's to go to Bayern Munich the boys' preference is to go to Bayern Munich. Mm. The boys, because Bayern Munich also they, they offered a one-year deal, developmental deal. It, the boy wants to go to Bayern and go and prove himself. You know, I don't know why some all these are young kids. Eh? They get me out, <laughs> but uh, we just hope that. Nah, uh, nah, you know. big, nah, big club now. Everybody wants time for big club now. Yes, but you know, a lot of people would think that they will get consumed easily. But the boy was so sure about his ability. But you know, I just think that uh, anything because he's already not had any precision with any club. So, yeah. Yeah. so if he's going to any club, then he's going to like start from the scratch. So it is he just turned eighteen actually. So he's going to start from the scratch and be able to move. But I also was wishing best of luck too. So under under transfer that we are close that we know is going to happen, but we don't know where it's going to go now. Is gift Urban. Uh, Tottenham, they have bid, they sent a bid of like 27 million euros plus uh, 3 million euros add on. But I'm hearing that uh, Monaco brought in 12, 30 million euros with add ons. So Monaco, Monaco already outbid um, Tottenham in the race to sign Gibbs Tottenham. Tottenham. So, and you know, it's just crazy. I'm hearing that Sevilla too, they are trying to outbid Monaco in this last, you know, it's just so crazy because um and you know i just hope that uh it will choose the right club to actually what go into about tottenham don't you see these few things they said that uh, the hierarchy in tottenham prefer to sign gift urban because they can still sell him than to sign a 30 year old that will be 60 million i don't want to mention the 30 year old though that will be just be 50 million and there'll be no salon clause there the only club they will go going to in Saudi Arabia. So they believe that if they could have someone like uh, Gift Urban, they could actually would be sell on there. But you no, know, we have discussed about him. Let's him just sign. Then we cannot talk about his chances in that club. Hmm. And you had mentioned um Daniel Daga. What clubs are interested in signing him? Where do you think uh, he's most um, uh, you know it was uh, the Milan Giants, but uh, when Madini left AC Milan, uh, the old deal actually was collapsed. So I think that um, they're trying to get him into one of the championship club in England, which I'm not really actually was sure of. Mm. Yes, our our 16 year old midfielder. Yes, so let's he's see, be, he's let's see where he ends. He's, he's going to be 17 soon. He's I think he's already okay. 17. So let's yeah. see where he. Let's see where he ends up. You know, the window is still open for a, a while longer. Um, so there's still a lot of time for our players to make moves. Yes. Um, okay, looking at our under 20 team, you know, just to round off. Um, Solomon Agbalaka has always has already moved. Samson Lawal has already moved. Jutonde has moved, in fact, he has made his debut. Um we're waiting for Frederick to move, we're waiting for um Daga to move. Who do you think, out of all these players, is going to have the best season this year? Ah. Ah. For me. And when is our when is our yum yum captain going to make his own move? Uh, you know, I think the way things are, it's like um um our yum yum might finally go to what I have seen in um, in Abuja. Maybe that's where you end up with. <laughs> because what I see is part of yum yum, so I don't know where the, the yum yum is coming from. So, like uh, those that sold the uh, gift over from Bison FC, where is Bison in Nigeria? So, um, I would just say that uh, I don't know where he's going to move because I remember the Italian press asking Ladam Boso that, uh, ah, sorry, where is yum yum? That uh, because there was a Syria Syria B club interested in. Uh, Daniel Bamayi. Where is Yum Yum? Yum Yum does not have any address. Yum Yum does not have any location. They don't have Jesse. They don't have uh, the only thing that Yum Yum have 
is documents that they are registered and that never mind you. That's all. That is all. So you know, I, even um even sorry, even Samson Lawal, um when he made his move to Livingston, I yeah. mean people from Nigeria were reporting the move saying he moved from Castina United. Yes. But on the Livingston official website, they said they signed him from Pro Success FC. Yes. In Nigeria. Yes. I remember I went online, I was searching, I don't know, maybe I didn't search well, but I could not find the logo, I could not find any information on the club. Yes. Uh, if, if you look at uh, transfer market, you will not see, it's, it's a logo-less uh, uh, club, Pro Success Academy. It doesn't have logo. <laughs> it does not have players too. So the issue is this. Some of these players are owned by someone. Is for example now you are your team now, you own a player. So you now want to go and form a company that you are the the player is playing, but you now take the player to one academy. So when it's time to sell the player, so all the whole thing will come will come to you because you are the club. Mm. So it was uh, it was on loan in Casino United in the NNL. It was on loan. Somebody loaned him. See. What they do is this. It's like they own a player. It's like it's like house app. They own a player by themselves. They don't have club, but they own a player. So it's like a master <laughs> and uh, or, or uh, this thing. master and um, the your know, this thing. Your um, how would I put it? You you just own a player totally to yourself. That is what they are doing. So mm. at the end of the day, all these clubs they don't have venue. They don't have places to train. They don't have location. Somebody said that uh, he wants to trace Bison FC. Say, hey, if you trace Bison FC, they might tell you to Bison, no? Because you will go to, they will carry you to where you don't know. So I just say, let Bison FC be Bison FC. But what I would just say basically is this, you know, uh, it's good that something like that has moved. At least, Pro Academy, I don't know, maybe they're going to sign a, a sell on clause again because if they sign a sell on clause, that means that uh, the man is becoming richer. So, you know, mm. you know, the soccer business, ah, I don't know how to say it, it's so so deep. Even mm. I will not say this thing now, even the Benjamin Fredericks situation is also tough, but I don't want to say it on there. That's it. All right, all right. I mean, a lot, a lot is still going to happen before the end of this month. I'm looking yes. forward to seeing all of that. Um, okay, I think we are now at the end of today's episode, episode seven of the Nigeria Football Chronicles podcast. Um, a lot of stuff to talk about. Another week is coming up. More players are going to be playing in the Europa League, in the Champions League, in the Conference League qualifying round. Um, hopefully, we can see as many of our players as possible make it to Europe. Um, so that is more exciting for us more games coming up this weekend and of course we'll try to bring you guys the episodes back to back to back if you enjoyed today's conversation please make sure you leave a comment make sure you subscribe to the channel wherever you're watching or listening on um and make sure that you are engaging with us and you're telling other people about the podcast um let's grow this thing into the biggest nigerian football podcast out there you know and then we'll take on africa we'll take on the rest of the world like that like that um but thank you very much guys for your support as always you know, I'm your host, IoT, and I have my reliable co-host. Midlai, thanks for watching. Keep subscribing. We'll keep on serving you. Hot, hot. Yes, thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.